My Bowl TV. I'm Jim, and we're going from point A to point B. Today, as you can tell from the title, we're gonna talk about the gong. First of all, does that mean guess a meter or guess or meter? Either way, it's patently impossible to understand this thing. When you read the owner's manual, you get the following information. This displays the high voltage battery state of charge and vehicle range prediction. The value in the center is an estimate of how far the vehicle can be driven on the remaining charge based on driving habits and conditions learned. Well, first of all, it doesn't tell you what driving habits or what conditions it has learned or how many miles over which this is stretched. The range estimate and max and min numbers may be affected by climate settings, current vehicle conditions, and ambient conditions. Estimated range may increase and decrease based on climate control energy consumption. Again, it doesn't tell you by what percentage. We're going to talk about that today. A trend bar on the far left estimates how recent driving habits, conditions, and climate settings are affecting the range prediction. So there's a little yellow bar above and below the actual displayed mileage in the center, which tells you whether you're trending towards a higher or lower number. I get that. That's perfectly sensible. And when the high voltage battery state of charge is very low, in this case, 5% or less, the estimated range value in the center will change to low. Max and min ranges will no longer be displayed. Additional alerts may display and a sound may also be heard at a low state of charge. One of the things it's gonna tell you is that the power has been reduced and you're gonna have less power to drive the drivetrain, which means you're gonna to have to drive slower. I found that this drops off significantly at about 2% state of charge. Now let's discuss this in English. As a technical writer, I find this section in the owner's manual to be very poorly written, as poorly written as anything as I've ever read. And let's talk about this in a little more detail. The range meter displays the high voltage battery state of charge and a predicted vehicle range. The value in the center is an estimate of how far the vehicle can be driven on the remaining charge based on the learned driving habits over the past 50 to 100 miles. The middle range number is the range based on the state of charge multiplied by the current miles per kilowatt hour. You can do the math on this yourself and check it out. For example, if the meter reads 50%, and the average miles per kilowatt hour over the past 50 to 100 miles has been about four, then the expected range should read 130 miles. The maximum and minimum number ranges will be 30% higher or lower than the middle number. And those in this case would read 169 for the max and 91 for the low. You can again do the math on this yourself. That max and min number always seem to be about 30% higher or lower than the middle number. The range meter is the range estimate that includes the most likely range, that's the middle number, and a maximum and minimum number, the top and bottom numbers, which might occur with changes like climate setting, current vehicle conditions, and ambient climate, climatic conditions. There's a trend bar that extends a yellow line above or below the middle range number that depicts whether the driving habits, climate control, and combined driving conditions are trending better or worse than the average depicted. When the battery state of charge drops below 5%, the estimated range value at the center will change to low and the max and min number will no longer be displayed. Additional alerts will display and power to the motor will be reduced, thereby limiting your speed. There may or may not be alert sounds played during this period. To keep the battery from being damaged, the car will stop when the displayed state of charge reaches zero percent. In this case, there's actually about a two to three percent buffer that remains on the battery. And you will most likely need a portable charger or you will have to have the car moved to a charging location. Now we're gonna talk about how to use the GOM. Since the GOM is very unreliable because of issues within the algorithms on how the numbers are computed and because it cannot look forward into your planned route, you have to do a little bit of math on your own. And here are four questions that I ask with regard to the GOM. Number one, 
is my planned route at a higher or lower speed than I've been driving for the past 50 to 100 miles? And number two, am I going from a mostly city to a mostly highway setting or vice versa? Number three, are there significant elevation changes along my planned route? And number four, what are the climate conditions along my planned route? For the first question, if the answer is faster, then I reduce the expected range by 1% for every one mile per hour faster that I will be driving. So let's say I've been averaging 60 miles per hour and the planned route is now 70 miles per hour, I will reduce the range that I expect to get by about 10%. For question number two, the answer is similar to question number one, but going from city driving to highway driving can reduce your mileage between up to 20 or 25 percent, depending on how much faster your highway driving is going to be. For question three, I will reduce the expected range by 2 percent for each thousand feet of elevation gain. If your elevation change is going to be 5,000 feet, reduce the expected range by an additional 10 percent. And for question four, this is kind of a bit tricky and you have to have a little bit of meteorological understanding. Are you going into a significantly colder climate? Will the temperature change by more than 30 degrees Fahrenheit? If so, reduce the expected range by 5%. Are you going to be driving through rain? If so, you will see a reduction in range based on the rolling resistance through the water on the road. In heavy rains, I have seen reductions upwards of 10%. This is not uncommon for electric vehicles, and it's also not uncommon for gas vehicles to get much reduced gas mileage when they're driving through water because the rolling resistance decreases the efficiency of your vehicle. Doesn't matter if it's electric or gasoline. So the bottom line, if my goal is to drive 150 miles, I will use the bottom number, that is the low estimate, plus a buffer of 20 miles as my minimum estimate. Some drivers will use the middle number plus 30 miles. In any case, I use the bottom number plus 20 miles and would add an additional 15 miles if I were going up in elevation by about 5,000 feet or if it was raining along my route. The bottom line is that the gama is a very strange animal. It's very hard to understand and you're going to have to experiment with it based on your driving styles and habits. If you tend to drive faster, add a little bit more buffer on the expected range and if you tend to be a more conservative driver and drive within the speed limits you're probably going to get a little bit better range than is shown on the gasometer again this is a strange animal so treat it as such and experiment with it on your own i know that some of you are going to be left confused by this video but if there's one takeaway here's what i would leave you with use the bottom number the low number plus 20 miles if you're a conservative driver. If you're a lead foot, use the bottom number minus 20 miles as your estimated range. In either case, charge your car accordingly. Make sure that you have enough range on that bottom number to make it to your next destination. Please do remember to subscribe, share, comment, and like, and ring the notification bell if you want to know when I upload something new. Also, remember to treat everyone with kindness, put a smile on your face, help someone today, and pay it forward when someone does the same. I want to thank you for your trust and time, and I will see you again real soon or somewhere along the route from point A to point B. Take it easy, everybody.